hundreds of people sitting in the computer that close to 10 o'clock. Is that, I, I, I think I counted when I looked at my watch. You can see it before. Well, good morning. Welcome to worship on our seventh Sunday of Easter. One last time, hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to see all of you. How'd you like the thunderstorms? Those were interesting. I, I was telling some folks when I woke up this morning around 5, I went, we obviously lost power because everything in my house is blipping. Plus, I look at my phone, and there are all these alerts. I'm like, oh, I guess I really fell asleep for about five hours. <laughs> just, yeah, five hours, yay. Um, so just some announcements to share. Um, if you were downstairs or heard noises from downstairs, the cyclist that I had the announcement in and that our council has been talking about for a few months did make it into town last night. They were planning, because we've had 80 to 90 degree days, leaving very early this morning to beat some of that heat and then we got thunderstorms and so i think they're on about plan j right now <laughs> uh, trying to figure out what to do because they are having to go over mountains and lightning and mountains don't really mix when you're on a bike like a pedal kind of bike not a motorcycle kind of bike so they were then now going to join us in worship but i don't see them so but if you happen downstairs or you see them, it's three guys and one of the guy's wives. I'm, they will gladly introduce themselves. If they wander up, I'll let them introduce themselves. But thanks to um, those of you who helped us um, make them feel welcome and brought food and all those things. So um, This Wednesday, we, have, we will have Bible study around noonish, depending upon when we get done. You can come on in, Kay, have a seat. Um, so anybody who would like to be... Um, would like to come if you don't want to come for food or you're like oh, I don't make, just come be part of it also for anybody who's might be interested we are having a board of worship meeting immediately following worship today we will meet in the library so please come and be part of that then just a heads up you will find something out of order in today's worship service so don't sit down till I tell you to <laughs> just fair warning I won't tell you when it's coming I'll explain where it, why, it, why it is when we get there. Um, are there things any of you would like to share as we gather this morning? Well, our out-of-town group has come upstairs. Okay, my first question is, where's Daisy? Is she outside in the band? Okay. Just wondered. I didn't know if she's going. Um, I just said that you guys were on like plan J, trying to figure out about what this morning was going to look like. So I'll let the other two guys come up here, and then I'm going to invite you, if you would kind of share with people who you are, what you're doing, because they've heard me talk about it, but I'd love them to hear from you. And they're working on a joke, and so maybe you can help them figure out how to end the joke, too. Come, come on, mailed right faster. <laughs> I invite you, if you guys would come up here, um, we are live streaming, so the only way our live streaming folks can hear you is if you're on a mic, so I'll invite you to come this way. Come on, Kay, you got to introduce yourself too. I see that. It's like I can tell you planned it. So I need you at that mic so that our folks who are joining us on live stream can hear you too. Okay. You can take it out and do it this way, whatever you'd like. Great. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you for your hospitality, for your welcome. Uh, we have feasted on the goodness of your love. We have uh, slept well this night, despite the torrential downpours from the thunderstorms. And uh, we are glad to be able to join you in worship today. Uh, my name is Al Castle. I'm a retired ELCA pastor. I served in California and in Arizona. This is my wife, Kay. And uh, we're wearing matching shirts that say, cool, because we live in an area very, very close to cool California. We like to say that we are beyond cool. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Um, and, and just real quickly, I'll let my, my, my brothers here uh, share with you just a little bit about why we're doing what we're doing or how it's going forward. But we started in Anacortes, Washington, and our goal is to make it to Portland, Maine. So uh, we have days and days ahead of us cycling. Over the last four days, we've covered crossed five mountain passes, 
and we know them intimately now. <laughs> um, but uh, I think one of the reasons we're doing this is, is one is, is just for the journey, to experience the land, uh, to challenge ourselves, to test ourselves, but also to meet the people. And that was one of the things that we all agreed upon is that we wanted to be able to, to get to know this country through the eyes of the people who inhabit it. So thank you for uh, showing your hospitality towards us, welcoming us here into your community. And uh, we're just so glad that uh, we did not have to be outside in tents in the th downpour last night. So I'll hand it over to Scott. Thanks, Al. Uh, good morning. And uh, uh, I, too, very much appreciate it for all the hospitality that everybody has shared with us. Uh, and uh, it's, it's just been uh, wonderful. And uh, I was the latecomer to this journey. Um, Al and Mel had decided, I guess, long ago to do this. And so I was chatting with Al one day on one of our club rides and uh, was talking about uh, maybe riding the Oregon coast, you know. And Al says, well, how about let's go coast to coast? And I'm thinking, well, that's close enough, right? And <laughs> right, right up to the time when it was departure day and then it's like oh well, what did I get myself into but um, it's it's really fantastic and to like Al said to see the country and seeing it from the seat of a bicycle um, and to really just listening to the sounds the noises you know the waterfalls and riding along and just taking it all in um, and it gives perspective um, and it's something that uh, as you challenge yourself um, when you're going along, um, it's kind of what keeps you going. And so looking forward to more days to come. Uh, again, thank you very much. I, oh, yes. Uh, the other part of this, so I'm a retired banker. I was 36 years, so I was the retired pastor. I'm the retired banker. Uh, I worked with Bank of America for 36. So um, we'll let you guys, I'll let Al or, or Mel put the rest of it here, and then you guys can help us finish uh, the, the, the joke here of a retired pastor, banker. And now I'll, I'll turn you over to Mel. I'm, I'm the, <clears throat> okay. I'm the retired postman. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I was a, I'm a retired postman. I worked for the Postal Service for 32 years. And uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, I worked in Phoenix, uh, Phoenix, Scottsdale, uh, Arizona, um, the the city of sweat. We like to say when when we're there. But uh, a little choked up. I didn't sleep much last night. I had a I had a rough night. Um, it's all good. We're gonna be we're gonna be fine. Uh, I had this dream when I was 17 years old. <laughs> Excuse me. It was Al that made this happen. So that's why we're here. I always wanted to cross this country by bicycle and meet everybody that I could meet. And uh, for the grace of God. We wouldn't be here. So, anyway, I'm sorry. Anyway, that's why we're here. So, retired pastor, retired banker, and retired postman walk into a bar. You have to finish that joke. <laughs> that's all we got. <laughs> That's the first one yet. That, that'll work. That's the first. That's the first finish of that. I'm not cycling. Uh, I'm not cycling. I'm driving the big van out on the side of the church, and I'm just here to support. And after years of my husband going off and doing youth trips and other trips and all, this, I said, "No, I'm going with. I'd rather not say goodbye to you for two months." So, <laughs> great guys here, and we're just starting out. So. Who knows what God has in store? Wonderful breakfast. Thank you, Steph and Jeff, and whoever made the casserole. Karen. Karen. And thank you, Pastor, for taking us out to Maverick last night. What a great restaurant you all have. And you know, the prices are much cheaper than we experience in California and wherever else we live. So you're lucky. <laughs> Beautiful country here. Thanks she so said much. Y'all. <laughs> I'm rubbing on. <laughs> 
so I, I just, uh, again, thank you for letting us be here. Thank you for the hospitality. Um, I have a tagline for this because I'm a pastor. You always have to t attach scripture to whatever you do. So this is from Ezekiel 120. You all have that memorized, right? Yeah, I didn't think so. So I have it here in front of me because I don't have it memorized either. Wherever the spirit would go, they went. And the wheels rose along with them for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. With that, I invite you to take just a few moments to prepare your hearts for worship. I invite you to stand as you are able and to join me in the thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of a new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty. You are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your section. Strengthen us, hold justice for all. Satisfy the world's needs through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you in the Spirit reign forever. Amen. Amen. We join in our opening hymn, I'll herald the power of Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We are gathered this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of praise for today is, Lord, I lift your name on high. pray. God of glory, your son Jesus Christ suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay, this is the part you can't sit down yet. So all of you grabbing your things. We're going to read. Wait, no, wait. I got to. Give me a second. Give me a sec. You'll see that that says we're doing hallelujah, which should tell you we're doing a gospel. And you're like going, oh, but that's not where it goes. We're actually, this is actually the Ascension gospel. And Luke Acts is written by the same person, and this is the end of Acts, end of Luke. Our first lesson is the beginning of Acts. So I wanted you to kind of hear this story in the way it was kind of written. I mean, edited, but kind of written. So you get to hear me first, and then you get to hear our lector reading the rest of it. Now, thank you. Hallelujah. According to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the leaven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in the name of the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, He withdrew from there, withdrew from them, and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Now you may be seated for the remaining readings of the lessons. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Acts chapter 1, 6 to 14. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, 
It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set up by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm is from chapter 68. I will read the light print, and you will respond with the dark. Let God arise, and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so you should drive it away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am his bad name. Rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. Give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in the desert places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent the bountiful rain, O God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people. Let us be God. Our second reading is from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, 
is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. Even though I planned it, it still does feel weird to have the gospel not right now. I'll admit. Will you still be there? That's a question that has been written about by the president of the Lutheran School at Theology, or LSTC as it is known, one of our ELCA seminaries. And like so many other seminaries and colleges and universities of all stripes, LSTC has recently sold its building and is moving. Um, it's partially because of the changing face of the church, but it's also the changing face of people going to seminary. They're moving in with, believe it or not, the Roman Catholics. In Hyde Park, there are numerous seminaries, and one of them is CTU, Catholic Theological Union. And so they are renovating part of their building, and LSTC and the Methodist Seminary will all now be all together with the Roman Catholics. So in this, which is their last publication at their um, face, the president wrote the opening article, and it's kind of a look back and a look forward. And I thought it was interesting what he wrote, and I want to share you with it. And his, the title of it is, Will You Still Be There? This is part of his article, and my question is, can any of you relate to this? He wrote, imagine moving out of your home after 50 or 60 years. If you can, set aside the raw grief such leaving evokes. Set aside also the hope you have for your next home, exciting as that may be. Instead, live in this moment. The dawning task of all you have amassed and what to do with it now. That predicament that haunts with three questions. Keep, give, throw. Some of you have known this torment after just a brief residency. Others bravely faced it on behalf of someone no longer capable. So each little choice was layered with their loss. At this time, our school, we need not imagine such a move. It surrounds us every day. Oops, that's page three. Where page two go? There it is. Okay, I could just use the book, but... Then he also shared a challenge that he hadn't quite anticipated comes with moving. It's filling out what he called relocation petitions. Turns out that when you want to relocate a main campus of a school, you must petition accreditors and regulators to approve that move. And he went on to say that the amount of paperwork involved in these petitions is as if, and then this is a quote, the post office, sorry, <laughs> Mel, um, the post office, let me find where I am here so I quote it right. It's like the post office merged with the Internal Revenue Service and Immigration and Customs Enforcement. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like a lot of fun? Not. But what he said, filling out all these petitions made him realize is that all of this paperwork basically boiled down to one question. Will you still be there? It's not a question of buildings or books. It's a deeper issue of who we are. 
in what we represent, whether we will be faithful and reliable and true. Will you still be there? Sounds like not only a good question for the president of LSTC to ask and answer, but also other institutions as well. And maybe it's what's rolling around the heads of the disciples as they stand there that day and watch Jesus ascend. Perhaps it's a question rolling around in your head too. As you pray and live and try to figure out this thing we call life. Author Judy Bloom put it this way in her famous book title, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Will you still be there, Jesus, when I have questions? Or I need to see some divine love. Will you still be there, Jesus, when life gets tough and struggles come and there seems to be no way out? Will you still be there, Jesus? I need to know. I ask you to do the thing that President Nyman asked of the LSTC community. Live in this moment. Because we're really good at jumping to that next thing and finding that silver lining. And sometimes when we do that, we miss what's happening in the moment. Think of how we jump from Good Friday to Easter without allowing ourselves to live in that unknown day, Holy Saturday, that ends our Lenten season. It's that OMG, now what day, when nobody knew what was going to happen. And yet we rarely sit with Holy Saturday. After all, we've already got the Easter clothes picked out. The baskets are filled. And the lilies have been watered and put out. I know we don't do lilies here, but most people still buy Easter lilies at home. We don't like living in Holy Saturday. Well, today is another one of those times. And we're not all that uncomfortable, we're not all that comfortable with it either. So let's just move quickly on. Because you see, we're in that 10 days between Jesus' ascension, which was celebrated on Thursday and Pentecost Sunday, which is celebrated next Sunday. Hopefully that little change in the service order gave you enough start that you'll kind of feel the uncomfortableness of these 10 days. Now keep in mind that people were already in Jerusalem at the time Jesus ascends for Pentecost, but it's not our Christian Pentecost. It's actually the Jewish festival that is sometimes called Pentecost, and it's an ancient celebration. It occurs 50 days after the beginning of Passover, and it's called Shavuot. It also got the Greek name because that's the influence of the time, Pentecost. It gets the same name because of the 50 days. And it originally commemorated the giving of the law, the first five books of of the Old Testament, Hebrew scriptures, to Moses on Mount Sinai. In Jesus' time, It was also called the Festival of Harvest when sheaves of barley, which is their winter crop, were brought to the temple each day and given as an offering for all of God's provision. It was a celebration, big time. That's what everybody's in town for expecting. So liturgically, we're in this in-between time, kind of Holy Saturday-like, Shavuot. And we have to wait, much like those disciples did years ago. And although we may know what's coming next, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, I invite you to stand with the disciples and realize that they don't know and maybe we don't know either. They had to wait, trust, and hope. Will you still be there, Jesus? A question for them and us still today. Now we all know and have had those in-between times. For those of you who hang out with us regularly, you know I'm kind of in one of those personal in-between times. Um, My chemo regimen ended the mid to late April and I go through my first round of post-treatment tests this Friday and find out the following Friday whether it was all worth it. 
And I faced far more challenges living a somewhat normal life after finishing chemo than I did in the midst of it. And my anxiety grows with each new little twitch and funny feeling. And I wonder, and I ask, are you still there, Jesus, or were you only there for those days of active treatment? For those of you who have been pregnant, you know what it means to wait. You hear that news, you're having a baby, and then it takes 41 weeks for that to actually happen. (laughs) And for some people, it never does come. And it's why it makes celebrations of Mother's and Father's Day hard for so many. And while you wait, you plan and you get things ready. You figure out how to put cribs together and all of those things. But think about how your life would be different if you knew you were having a baby, but you didn't have a clue when it was coming. Because nobody had figured out the human gestational cycle. (laughs) For all those who have physically been pregnant, you're like, what do you mean? I don't know when this is coming. (laughs) Especially if you're pregnant in August. (laughs) How would you live your life differently if you didn't know there was an end to it when there would be a baby? What would you do? For those who live on the margins of our society, whether that be because they have no place to call home or being stuck in the cycle of poverty, or being an immigrant fleeing certain death, to not being the dominant gender or race or cultural background or political party or whatever else it is that we use to differentiate and to be told over and over again, well, just wait, just wait, and be implied with platitudes like, well, we're working on that. We're studying that. A committee has been formed for that. Now is not the right time to address it, or what do you expect? That's the way it's always been. Living in Holy Saturday time, in the now what time, can feel like and actually be a death blow. And you can hear the cry goes up. Will you, are you, Jesus, still there? And we wonder whether Jesus will be faithful and reliable, and true. As the disciples find themselves in that moment, their eyes are drawn skyward. Perhaps Peter and James and John remember another time when a cloud came and encircled them, that day of transfiguration. Or perhaps their minds went back to that day at the Jordan River, whether they were there or just heard the story so many times they could repeat it like they were there, where the heavens were opened up and Jesus was called the beloved and they were told to listen to him. Each time what happened in front of their eyes didn't quite fit their reality. But later, later they understood it. And the best place to look up, to count on, is heavenward. Maybe this is one of those times when we have to take Jesus at his word. Jesus says there will be suffering. No one gets through life unscathed, without challenge. And most of the time, those are not fair. They are unjust. They're not warranted. Things just happen. And you have to decide how you're going to respond to it. And since we've been able to test Jesus' other promises, like when he told the disciples that the Messiah would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and you're my witnesses of this, he said, we know he's right. And the disciples had seen it all happen just as Jesus said they would. And they've seen the promise of healing happen to people like a Roman official's daughter, Peter's mother-in-law, A friend dropped through a roof, and a little girl found dead in her bed. The answer to our question, will you still be there, Jesus, has always been yes. And so maybe, just maybe, we can trust that answer will be the same now in these waiting days. 
We can pray and act and imagine in new and mind-blowing ways because a power like we've not seen before is on the way. And we will be able, as Jesus promised, to do even greater things than he did. And we'll have companions on our journey. Because the power will no longer reside in one Galilean carpenter's son, but will be infused in many. Imagine what could happen with power like that unleashed on the world. Who doesn't want to be part of that flash mob? And so we wait. Yes, Pentecost will come. I am totally confident that when you come here next Sunday, all of this white will be gone and it will be red. (laughs) But I encourage you to stay for just a few days longer in these fading days of white and dream, imagine, and trust that even now God is up to something powerful. Stay in these in-between days so that you are prepared for what is to come. And then go and tell and be the witnesses Jesus said his disciples would be. Yes, it's pretty tall marching orders. No wonder we need that power from on high to descend and guide us. Wonder what that's going to look like this year. Hmm, could be interesting. Are you ready to find out? Tune in next week. Let's pray. Holy God, Jesus walked these earthen roads telling of your grace, love, and mercy. Even though many didn't listen, didn't believe, some did, and they committed themselves to telling your story throughout the world, even in the face of challenges that included death itself. Thank you for those courageous, faithful believers. Lord, we feel the burdens of life today. We don't know what's coming next or how to respond, so we look to those who came before us in faith. And we pray that you would work among us, empower our actions, and make our ordinary places holy places for your sake. And help us to trust you in all our in-between times, including today. As it is in accord with your will, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
invite you to stand as you are able as we share our faith these de- this day using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, for death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in hope and joy of this season, we turn our hearts to prayer, praying for everyone according to their needs. Ever-present God, root your church firmly in you. Let us neither become entranced, staring up into the heavens, nor distraught by the suffering that happens in our world. Teach us to see you in every face, every place, and yes, Lord, in every moment. Hear us, O God. God of the cosmos. You cradle creation in your loving arms and anoint it with signs of your presence. In the budding of flowers, the birth of a baby, and the formation of the land and sky, reveal your abundant life. Hear us, O God. Eternal God, your reign is above us, around us, beneath us, and beside us. As you rule the cosmos with justice and mercy, Pour out your spirit upon those in authority, that they serve humbly and justly. Hear us, O God. God of companionship, provide clarity and direction for those experiencing life transitions in births and deaths, for new employment and new relationships, as well as divorces and departures. We pray for those receiving new diagnoses or undergoing treatment for illness or or injury, for those grieving and those excited about new adventures, for those who are recovering. We lift in prayer this day, Marcia and Verna. We pray for Logan, Marvin, Joe, Lynn, Clint, David, Chris, Rose, Sean, Dolores, for the family and friends of Ryan Wishon, for Al and Mal and Scott as they cycle across our country, and for Kay as she tries to keep them all together. And we lift those who are on our hearts. Hear us, O God. God of welcome, you call us to feast at your eternal banquet. We give thanks for those who came before us, whose lives witness to your love. Hear us, O God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with those around you in a way you and they are most comfortable.
I invite you to stand as you are able. Let us pray. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to give you our thanks and praise, O God, for you give strength to the weak, freedom to the prisoners, and an eternal home to the homeless. With the Son and the Spirit, you lived before the world existed, and all things were created from your love. You led your people through the desert from slavery to the promised land and nourished them through your law and prophets. Your son Jesus Christ glorified you on earth by finishing your work and making you known to us as the only true God in whom we find eternal life. When he was crucified, you raised him to new life. And when he ascended into heaven, he promised to send the Holy Spirit who fills us with your truth and power and protects us in the name of Christ so that we may be one as you are one. Therefore, with all of heaven and earth, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The things of God for the gathered people of God. Come and taste and see that the Lord is good. By the congregation to be seated would invite you this day to come to our communion area through the center aisle. We will commune one side of the congregation and then the other. I will place a wafer, the body of Christ, in your hand, and then I invite you to approach our communion assistant and pick up a cup with either wine or grape juice, whichever you are most comfortable with. The grape juice is the lighter liquid in the center of the tray. And keep that cup with you as you return to your seats and place it in the baskets on the side as you go down the aisles. All of our communion elements are gluten-free for any for whom that is of a concern. This is Christ's table. It is open to all. Come, taste, and see, and know that, yes, Christ is with you.
invite you to stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world. In Jesus' name, amen. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. We close today singing together, Shout to the Lord. Peace serve the risen Lord. Thanks.